From city streets to country roads, food connects Americans. Cultures landing on our shores, bringing so many culinary choices. We celebrate our differences, united in deliciousness. In every shared meal and cherished family recipe, taste buds rejoice and pride renews. America can be exceptional. And a cooking show might just remind us. Meet Brenda Mendoza. Brenda is trained in the culinary arts. Like many people, her cooking influences began with her family. Mom and dad are from Guatemala, just south of Mexico. Yucatan influence because Guatemala touches the Caribbean and the Pacific. So my grandmother, I considered her my bonus grandma. And she taught me a lot about food. She immigrated from Havana, Cuba, and I learned Cuban food first as a result of her influence. I went to culinary school because I had a passion for writing, actually. I went to Cal State Northridge and wanted to write, and a professor of mine who was a mentor said, you should try to go to culinary school. I work for USC Dornsife, which is the College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. I have the pleasure of managing an events team, and because of that, I'm able to create some magic with food by creating some amazing menus that go hand in hand with our events. Brenda has been instrumental in my love of cooking. I'm so grateful she agreed to be in our pilot episode. It's just, you know when it's All not right, your kitchen, I'm warming up to it. Cut. Yeah. All right, so I have, been, I have been busy coming up with a concept. When I was a kid, my mom would make stuffed shells. Mm. Man managote in there and, you know, put some sauce Manicotti, on top. Manicotti, like, Manicotti, like, yeah. What if we took a stuffed shell and we stuffed it mm -hmm. with something Mexican? Hmm. Okay. You're open to any. Yeah. Mexican in a protein that we could put in there plus cheese. That's going to be I'm trying to think of what is spicy, has that flair, but we could mix the cheese in that could still be the ricotta, ricotta, sorry. <laughs> we could do pulled chicken with the sauce, cook it in the sauce so it braises. I, I could see the herbs coming into play a little better with the green um, and some roasted corn to really freshen it up too. We could grill corn and grill the chiles. Okay. So sort of this warm, bubbly casserole comes out of the oven and then you've got this like delicious something on top that's like fresh and, you know. It sounds delicious. What do you want me to say? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll be better in person because that's more my forte than this. Once the food's in front of me, you'll, you'll, you'll want to shut me up. I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you too. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. Ready? Here we go. One, go. Okay. Hey, Mark, these peppers, they're beautiful. Yeah. What are we going to do with them? Well, I think we're going to add the hatch peppers to our, our fused cuisines. We have Mexican, we have Italian, but what we haven't figured out yet is what we're going to call the dish we're making today. Okay. So it's a little Mexican. It's a little Italian and... We're stuffing managote shells. Managote. Okay. Manacote. 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 Oh, okay, manacote. Uh, Mexican manacote? It's perfect. Mexican manacote. Okay. One of the key ingredients in our dish is hatch chili peppers. Peppers are so prevalent in the food we eat, but a lot of people don't understand what it takes to produce peppers. Here is one of those people who transformed the chili pepper. New Mexico. Famed for its Hatch Valley chilies, owes much of its culinary reputation to contributors like Dr. Roy Nakayama. Dr. Nakayama, a pepper breeder at New Mexico State University, developed several chilies, including the Big Jim, the current Guinness World Record holder for the biggest pepper ever. After two years at New Mexico A&M, Roy enlisted in the U.S. Army during World War II and was captured at the Battle of the Bulge. He spent seven months as a German POW. After the war, Roy returned to New Mexico, dedicating himself to food cultivation. His work solidified Hatch's status for world-class chilies and set the stage for future pepper research. You like the little spoon? These were very rustic Guatemalan bites. That's my grandfather's. <laughs> I went towards it because it gave me like that. 
To poach the chicken, start with cooking oil and add the carrots, celery, and onion. Nestle the chicken with the veggies with just enough water to almost cover the breasts. Then add stock to cover completely. You'll need about a cup. Season with salt and pepper, simmer and cover for 30 minutes. Put our shells, we're gonna stuff them, put the, all the shells there. Um, I think it's gonna be really good. Do you have olive oil? Lightly oil of peppers, corn and onion and place the garlic in tin foil. Throw everything on the grill with medium direct heat. The peppers will char quickly, so keep an eye on them. That one's good. That one looks good, yeah. This one. They're easier to peel if the char is all over. Cover with cling wrap and let sit for 15 minutes. The corn, onion, and garlic should be done when the peppers finish cooling. Peel the skin off the peppers and finely dice and reserve one pepper for the cheese filling. Then place the peppers, one grilled onion, and four grilled garlic cloves in a blender. Add about a cup of water and a half a cup of chicken stock. Then season with salt and pepper and cumin. Top it off with roughly chopped fresh Italian parsley and cilantro and blend until almost smooth. Boil a frying pan under low medium heat, add the blended green sauce and the juice of half a lime, reducing the sauce just a little. Now's a good time to start the monogote shells. So one of the key areas of our dish today is the filling. And the dish is inspired by something my mom used to make when I was a kid, it was stuffed shells or stuffed managote. And I'm so lucky to have my mom here today that she can tell us a little bit about the filling that you used to put in the stuffed shells when I was growing up. Well, I used to um, take the regatta cheese um, and I used to add Pecorino Romano, uh, also a pound of mozzarella cheese. A pound. A pound. And I would also add some uh, chopped fresh garlic, a uh, little salt, pepper, an egg, and um, that was about it. So like a lasagna filling, essentially. Yes. So the Mexican equivalent is requesón. So we should try a little bit of that. So 50-50. Mm. Um, let's get some of the hatched chilies in there. Oh, yeah. Some roasted corn for some sweetness and some chicken. You think we're missing anything? Well, I was thinking of adding a little bit of... Uh, uh, more of an Italian flair with some uh, capers. Mm, capers. A so, nice. little bit of capers. Do it. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to throw some capers in there. Remove the poached chicken breast from the stock and let them cool. Let's start the 50-50 blend of Italian and Mexican filling. From the remaining grilled garlic, use around four cloves. Finely dice half a grilled onion. Look at how Brenda blends the garlic and the onions. Remove the kernels from the grilled corn. Add both rogota and requesón cheese to a mixing bowl. Add salt and pepper, the reserved diced hatch peppers, and the corn, garlic, and onion. Don't forget to add finely chopped capers. Thanks, Mom. Then shred the cooled off chicken breast and rough chop. Adding a little chicken stock to the filling, keep it moist, making it easier to fill the shells. Sprinkle on some fresh Italian parsley and cilantro. You want me to try it? Yeah. Or sauce? Brenda asked me to taste the filling with the green sauce. <laughs> I love the recipe. Yeah, me too. Is it good? You saw the recipe. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's good. It was so good, I couldn't keep the crew out of the kitchen. <laughs> and while they enjoyed it, it was time to remove the shells from the stove. Okay. Here's a useful trick. Placing a Ziploc into a glass made fill in the bag easy. 
piping our delicious mixture into the shells was so simple this way. It's like doing a enchilada, really. Absolutely. Look how much fun my mom is having. Place about half of the reduced green sauce at the bottom of a baking dish and start placing the stuffed shells. Spoon the remaining green sauce on top and cover with jack cheese and mozzarella. Throw on some fresh herbs to finish it off. Then place uncovered in a 375 degree oven for 30 minutes. And if you can, broil the top at the end until it's golden. And there you have it, our Mexican Managote. Oh my gosh, look at this. The oh, cheese, yeah. this looks so good. Oh my God. Wow. It's good? Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. It's, it's like oh. mac lasagna, manicote. Mm. Go ahead. All right. But it's wow. Mm. It is wow. I'm making it for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mom. Oh, mom. You, you guys gotta try this. Cultures fuse together in deliciousness. That's the melting pot. And although we all come from different places, we benefit so much from each other's company. <laughs>